Hi, I'm Marshall Evans, Computer Science from the NYU New York campus, and my partner is Kelvin Hu from the Computer Science Department at NYU Shanghai. Um, our project is IMDB Movie Genre Classification. So let's start out with what is IMDB. So if we go ahead and take a quick tour through the IMDB website, uh, let's go to a particular movie. We'll go to my favorite one, which is Ghostbusters the famous Bill Murray. Now there's all sorts of information that IMDb provides, whether it's ratings, you can click on a particular actor and get their filmography, other films they've been in. Um, there's people who also like this, so there's movie recommendations. Um, but for our project, what we used is this storyline here, the synopsis, the three oddball scientists, etc. And then this genre information, which comes with multiple tags of different genres that the movie is associated with. Now for a little background information about our project, let's, uh, let's go to another video clip. In today's world, we face a huge problem. This is movie genre classification. We still rely on the user's submission to classify genres of movies on websites like IMDb. Now the problem with this is, sometimes people can't agree on what genre a movie is. Dude, I'm telling you, Cabin in the Woods is definitely a horror movie. It might start out representing a horror movie, but the true nature of the film is a fantasy thriller. Sometimes, people are reliable with their movie classifications. The Human Centipede is definitely a family animation film. Some people, however, aren't. Now with our product, hopefully we can solve this movie genre classification issue. But before you buy into anything, we want to make sure you understand every step of the process with this in-depth presentation on how our product is made. So, as that, uh, that little clip said, the goal of our project is to be able to use movie synopses to successfully classify movie genres and to automate this process so we no longer have to rely on user submissions. Regarding our project, we're focusing on three machine learning algorithms, support vector machines, k-nearest neighbors, and latent Dirichlet allocation. Throughout the presentation, we may refer to them by their abbreviations, SVM, KNN, and LDA respectively. Before we can do any machine learning on our data, we have to do a whole lot of pre-processing, which is why the first step of our project is pre-processing, and it's, that's mostly done in Python and Java. We started with a data set of movies and their synopses, which was a whopping 3.2 million lines long. This is an example of the first data set and what one of the initial terms looked like. We also had a data set of movies and associated genres which was an impressive 1.9 million lines long. And this is just an example of that same movie, The Lucky Ones, in this data set. Eventually we managed to iterate through these lists and whittle them down to a random 10,000 movies with synopses and genres. These selected movies were arranged into a CSV file to help keep them organized and make them easily iteratable in Python and RStudio. To help get better results on a relatively small data sample, we decided to use five-fold cross-validation. In this method, the data set is divided into five subsets, and our machine learning method is repeated five times. Each time, one of the five subsets is used as the test set, and the other four subsets are put together to form a training set. Then the average error across all five trials is computed. These are several screenshots of the selected data organized into the CSV file in Excel. This is the breakdown of the genres of the initial data set. We selected the 12 most common genres for our project. This is that previous slide visualized against our selection of movies. It was perhaps not the most even split when we took our sample set. We probably have too many crime movies and nowhere near enough adult ones. First, we have to go through each synopsis and remove stop words. Hans Peter Loon, one of the pioneers in information retrieval, coined the concept of stop words these are words that don't necessarily add any valuable information to your retrieval process and therefore are often removed in projects like ours. Unfortunately, we can't stop at just stop words. 
Because our data set also needs some normalization. To do this, we use stemming. Stemming helps normalize the words. Some examples include if the word ends in ed or ing, we remove those endings. If a word has a different spelling, often American and British have different spellings of the same word. Or if the word is plural, those are all normalized and stemmed down. Next, we use term frequency inverse document frequency, or TF-IDF for short. TF-IDF is a ratio between how many times a word is used in a document versus the number of documents where the word is used. Using TF-IDF allows you to take the document size into account and truly determine how important a word is to that synopsis, whether it is just a common word used in every synopsis. And finally, with our data pre-processed, we can begin the machine learning process. Intuitively, movies belonging to the same genre should share more common keywords in their synopsis. So if we consider a movie synopsis as the point in the hyperspace, then the movies with similar genre information should be close together. We use basic k nearest neighbors and calculate distance between substantiated points and every point in the training set. We then get the indices of the closest k points and classify the genre based on the most popular genre in those closest k points. This is KNN on the IRIS dataset that we did for homework. As you see, the error is extremely low at only 3.3%, and base KNN is a very effective machine learning technique for this dataset. This is because it only has a single label, unlike our movie synopsis dataset. The biggest difference between IRIS classification problem and genres classification problem is that IRIS data is associated with only one label while movie data can be associated with more than one label, and the KNN package in R can only give single label prediction for KNN. The error rate would be largely decreased if we could make KNN generate multiple predictions for movies. This is a future possible direction for KNN. First, for each new instance, its average distance is calculated for each genre cluster. Second, a base threshold is set for average distances and the new point is classified as all genres whose average distance falls below the threshold. So the second algorithm that we used is support vector machine. So in support vector machine model is a representation of the examples as points in space mapped so that the examples of the separate categories are divided by a clear gap that is as wide as possible. New examples are then mapped into the same space and predicted to belong a category based on which side of the gap they fall on. So remember we did an assignment on digit recognition before and as you can see, the precision of predicting the digits is pretty high using SVM. But the biggest difference between the digit recognition problem and our project is that digit recognition is a single prediction problem, which means it only gives you one prediction each time, when movie genres classification is usually associated with multiple predictions. So in order to make SVM give us multiple predictions on genres, we came up with this idea of using threshold probability and the genres choose table. So basically, the SVM module in R has a probability model for classification, and this probability model fits a logistic distribution using maximum likelihood to the decision values of all binary classifiers. So the decision values are produced when SVM trains the binary classifiers using one against one approach and it then computes the a posteriori probability for each class using quadratic optimization. And here is a screenshot of the probability matrix we obtained from the SVN for 12 genres. So after we got the probability matrix, we need to set a probability threshold for giving multiple predictions in this screenshot, we typically use 0.25 as the threshold value, which means the movie will be classified to all genres whose probability values are above 0.25.
Then we make a choose table for all the predictions that we generated from the task data. We also went back to generate a choose table for the original labels of the task data. Here is just a screenshot of the label choose table and the predict choose table we've generated. And we try different threshold values for the prediction process. And this is just a comparison of the results we obtain under different threshold values. And as you can see, the precision for the threshold value at 0.25 is much higher than the other cases. But however, as a trade-off, the recall for the 0.25 case is relatively lower than the other cases. We also tried weighted SVN, where we assign different weights to different genres based on their proportions in the trained data set. As you can see, the precision for the non-weighted SVN is much higher than weighted SVN, while the recall of the weighted SVN is much higher. So there is actually a trade-off between the weighted SVN and non-weighted SVN. This is where we start latent Dirichlet allocation. LDA is a generative model that allows sets of observations to be explained by unobserved groups that explain why some parts of the data are similar. For example, in our project, when observations of words are collected into documents, it posits that each document is a mixture of a small number of topics and that each word's creation is attributable to one of the document's topics. We started with a CSV file that has all the movie synopses, and we separate the synopses into 12 groups by genres. Basically, each genre now has a group of documents that is going to be used in LDA. We did a little more pre-processing. Just like we did in previous pre-processing, we had removed numbers and stem words, and after that, we created a document term matrix for use in the LDA function, which is just a mathematical matrix that describes the frequency of terms that occur in a collection of documents. Finally, we were free to run LDA on the synopsis pool of each genre. For our topic generation, we set the K value at 100. So we basically use LDA to sort through each genre and find the 100 most common topics for each genre. This is the return of the LDA on the horror data set. As you can see, it prints out all 100 topics with what the topics are. It also prints out the index of each documented synopsis in the horror data set and which topic it is most closely related to. The actual goal of this project is to combine these two giant lists and use machine learning to predict the genre of a new movie based on the trained data gathered from previous movies. LDA returns a list of topics which doesn't actually particularly help us reach that goal. As previously stated, LDA is more of a generative model that allows sets of observations to be explained by unobserved groups, which should then yield similarities among those groups. Another project, which this would be more suitable for, is movie recommendation systems. Let me show you an example of that. So as you can see here, I've highlighted a particular topic in the LDA printout. If, God forbid, you like horror movies, that are heavily featured around clowns, and this would give you a list of relevant movies. These ones here highlighted all share the same main topic of clowns. Now we're going to do a little machine learning just for fun. We invented a new type of machine learning-esque method creating an extremely naive classification using the results of LDA. The topic labels became a bag of words of its own and were turned into a weight vector to then classify another synopsis. We wanted to use LDA, but it just didn't particularly work with our problem, so we kind of forced this naive method using the topics generated by LDA. Each genre has a weight vector that was produced from the topic values, and that is what each synopsis is run through. It is extraordinarily unsuccessful, the highest precision being family with just over 12%, and the lowest being adult, which straggles at a measly 1.6%. The average genre precision was 9.1%, which is just a little bit better than the 1 out of 12, or 8.3%, which would be the probability of just randomly guessing a genre. Finally, we made a little Java app 
so we can have something tangible from the project to show the friends and family. Now let's watch a demo of how this app performs. Alrighty, so um, I'm just going to take you through the little uh, Java app, app thing we made at the end of the project for fun. Um, I guess first we should just test something from our CSV data set. I don't know, we can just select a random thing. How about like that? That, that looks good. Um, and then you just paste it in there. And then you find out the genre, which hopefully says crime. In this case, it says there's no definitive genres, but the most prominent was crime, uh, which means it didn't meet the threshold for any particular genre, but its highest one was crime, which is just what we wanted. Um, now let's try something. If I just open up Chrome, let's try something just off IM, IMDB. Um, I don't know, but a comedy of some sort. Uh, the Naked Gun movies are one of my favorites. Uh, that's, okay, I'll scroll down here to the synopsis. Here we go. Um, no, we don't want written by, so that would be the synopsis. Kind of a short one. I don't know if this will work. So hopefully... Uh, yeah, comedy right there. Okay, so that was good. And then uh, maybe let's have some fun with it. Let's let's try Obama State of the Union uh, address. So here's the actual transcript. Um, I, I ran it on this one earlier. Um, one of the reasons I want to show you it. Uh, oh, that's too far. God bless this country we love. And so this is a really long one, but uh, I can go ahead and paste it in there anyway. There it is, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, and find out the genre. And it's family, which is, I, I, I thought that was cute. It's the, the most prominent genre for Obama, State of the Union. Anyway, that's a little demo of our little Java app. Um, doesn't always work as well as it's supposed to, but it was just an add-on in the project, something we did for fun. Here comes the conclusion part. So after we finished this project, we figured out that SVN was actually the most effective method in our project when predicting the movie genres because it returned probability values for us to make multiple predictions on genres. And for the KNN, we believe that KNN could in theory be more effective if we can implement a method that enables KNN to predict multiple labels with multiple genres. And for LDA, we think LDA applies more as a generative tool to further identify a number of common topics within a genre and that could be useful for the users to further classify the movies from the same genre and the possible future work of our project is that we can actually use a larger trained data set since some genres especially like action and adult didn't have enough movies for the training process and short which is a large proportion of the original data wasn't represented enough in our data set and the other continuation of this project would be to implement the knm method we discussed earlier and if any viewers want a more comprehensive look into a multi-labeled knm method Check out the John and Joe paper cited in the references at the end of this video. So that's our project. Thanks for watching it, and we hope you enjoyed it. We learned a lot about machine learning and movie genre classification through this project, and we hope you did too. And a quick shout out to Professor Ross. Thanks for the semester.